one, two. And we'll check over here and I can see your comments. Great. And see people piling in. Awesome. Hey, Paul, what's up? All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Lightroom Live on Thursday. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be here today. Sorry I missed last month. Uh, I was in the middle of Adobe Max rehearsals and things, so I couldn't stream last month, but I'm back today. So I got back early this morning from LA, grabbed a couple hours of sleep, and woke up to do the stream. Here we are. So for those of you who are coming in, welcome. And we're going to, um, this should be a short one. This one shouldn't take as long as we normally take. But we're going to talk about how in the new version of Lightroom Classic CC that just came out this week, how you can now create an HDR panel. So you might be thinking, well, I've heard of HDR, I've heard of panel, what's, what's, what's HDR panel? So I'm going to switch over to my computer so you guys can uh, see what I'm talking about. And what you're seeing is actually the result of an HDR panel I did a few years ago. I did it manually. I did it the hard way. Uh, this is a five foot canvas that's hanging in my home. Uh, obviously, it's the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And um, I love that shot so much that I had a nice big print made of it. And that was a result of doing an HDR panorama the old way. So now we're going to see how to do it the new way. I'm going to talk about the old way, talk about how we used to do it, and then now how we can do it much, much easier, pretty much with one click. So with that said, welcome everyone. And uh, again, we're going to get started on how to create an HDR panel in Lightroom Classic CC with one click. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go to the, um, the collection I have of all of the photos that make up my HDR panel, actually there are two sets. So if you look closely, you can kind of make them out. You can kind of tell what they are. So there's this one, this one, and this one. These first three are kind of like the base of the tower. And you can see there is a kind of a medium exposure, an underexposed, and an overexposed. Well, that's the HDR part. That's a bracketed set of exposures um, that I just set with my camera. Uh, set it to bracket three expo three um, um, three captures three frames with a two stop difference in between each one. So it was click click click, then move up a little, click click click, then move up a little, click click click. So I got the tower in basically three sets of photos, um, and you can see the first three. Then the middle section is the second three. Same thing. Min, uh, kind of a medium exposure, underexposed, overexposed, and then the top, uh, same three. Um, and then I was already at the top and I just did it again. Click, 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 move down. So that's the second set starting at the top, then the next set in the middle, and then the last set, um, the last set on the bottom, which is actually this one, this one, and this one. Ooh, I'm missing one. It looks like I'm missing a photo from the bottom set. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're not going to use that one anyway. But anyway, um, in the past, when I made that actual wall print, in order to do that, I would have to first select all three of the first ones and then merge to HDR. Then do the next set. Where, you know, uh, Basically, just go through each one. Then I would have three new HDR raw files. And then the final step would be to put those together in a panorama. Well, that's again, the way you used to do it. And again, the more shots you're putting together to make the panorama and the more brackets you're using, like some people use five stops, some people use, uh, or five frames, some people use seven. Uh, so that's turns into a lot of photos to make that final panel. So luckily now, whether it's nine or, you know, six or, you know, 12 or 30 or how many you're using, you can now do this all with one step. So, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and select all nine photos. So, the first three, the second set of three, the third set of three, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Photo Merge and there's a new option. There used to be just HDR and just Panorama. They still have the same keyboard shortcuts, but now there's a brand new one. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, but it's HDR Panorama. And here's what happens when you choose that. 
it'll bring up the dialog box uh, for this new option. And it's doing all of those steps that I talked about in the past all at the same time. So it's taking each set of bracketed HDR images or bracketed images for HDR, making the HDR, and then it's putting it all together as a panel for you so that you don't have to do that all separately, all different steps. So it might take a little bit longer to do it because again, it's doing more work, but there it is. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the defaults may not be what you want. This is kind of a spherical uh, panorama, and it's probably not gonna work for this. And the next one down is cylindrical. That's probably not gonna work for this. So I'm probably just gonna jump to perspective. So when I jump to perspective, depending on the, on the amount of images or, or your system, it may have to build a new preview and it may take a little bit of time to do that uh, on a pretty quick system. So it built it pretty quickly. And then I noticed that, oh, there's a lot of excess space. I don't want any of that excess space. So you have a couple options. You can just auto crop and auto crops amazing. I love auto crop. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Or you could try boundary warp. It will really depend on your image. Now for me, I don't like boundary warp on this image because I'm way down at the base. And when I boundary warp, it just even makes the uh, geometry off a little bit more. And I could probably fix that with the geometry options in Lightroom, but the boundary warp helps you take up all that extra space. So actually that's not that bad. That's not horribly bad, but it, it can, depending on what you're shooting, boundary warp may warp it and, and it may look warped in other words. So I don't want to do the boundary warp on this one. I use boundary warp all the time. It's cool when, when, when the image doesn't get distorted, but in this case, I'm just going to use auto crop. Now at that point, you also have the option and you can even see it up here. It says all nine images su successfully merged. So it made the HDR. It made the panorama when it was done. I did the auto crop. It applied the auto settings, which by the way is optional. So if you want to go in and from this point, edit it yourself, you can, you don't have to use the auto settings, but if you use the auto settings, that'll get you a jump start into the editing process. And then if you want, you can create a stack of all of these images that it used so that it puts them all together for you as a stack inside of Lightroom. Um, I typically don't do that, uh, but you can. And uh, last but not least, you need to merge the final output. In other words, this was just a preview. This was to show you what you're about to get. Then when you click merge, it will do that part, that part in the background. So it's actually merging that in the background. I can keep working while it's doing that. And it will make a brand new raw file, a brand new HDR from this when it's done. And it will put it typically somewhere next to the ones that it just used to make them. So we'll give it a couple seconds to finish that process. And let me see if I'm missing any comments. Doesn't look like I am. All right. Uh, and good evening in Nigeria. So we got people from Nigeria, Dallas, Sydney. Welcome everyone. All right. So it just finished that panel HDR and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What happened? I thought I did an auto crop. And then when I clicked on it, it was actually there. So the preview takes a second update. But as you can see, it's made a brand new HDR panel from those, um, from those images. So you, your raw files, your JPEGs, whatever you use, don't get touched. They don't get messed with. This makes a brand new file from it. Now, from that point, then you can do whatever you want with that new file. So I just took it into the develop module. I'll give it a second to come up. There it is. And now I would continue the editing process. So we have the brand new profiles here in Lightroom. I would probably switch to something like landscape, make it pop a little bit more. Uh, let's see, Bivit. I usually go between Bivit and landscape. Not much of, oh, Vivid's darker. Go figure. I'm going to go with landscape. Uh, it's already done in auto. So from there, you're just adjusting what it's already done. So in this case, auto, for, for whatever reason for me, nine times out of 10 will make the contrast less. As I've said many times before, I like more contrast in my photos, not less. So I bump the contrast a little bit. Since it's a landscape, I can also get away with bumping up the clarity a little bit. And the beautiful dehaze to kind of start bringing out some of that cloud detail. Don't take it too far. If you take it too far, you'll actually make your photo worse. So don't go too far with dehaze. 
just come back a little bit and just offer a little dehaze. And I think on my final one that was on the wall, I actually used the graduated filter and made the clouds pop a little bit more. But you've got some vibrance you can add. It already added a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And of course you can keep tweaking. If you wanted to crop it to a specific size, you wanna take it into Photoshop and do more. Like for example, this, uh, I believe this is a soccer ball that was hanging from the tower at that point. I think I removed it on mine because I didn't want the soccer ball. But anyway, don't tell people in Paris that they get really upset. Uh, <laughs> so you can uh, go in and tweak it to your heart's content. And that's pretty much it. That is how the feature works. So take your bracketed exposures, shoot your overlap, usually around 20%, whether it's horizontal or vertical or both. And then last but not least, you're just going to right click and choose Merge HDR Pano. And that will do it. So uh, if I go back, let me see if I do have all of these. I got those three, those three. Oh, I do have all of them. Okay, I just miscounted. So if I wanted to do it again on this next set, just for people that are coming in late, right click, photo merge, the brand new HDR panorama. And in this case, it was not able to detect. Am I grabbing the wrong ones? And that will happen sometimes where if you grabbed, yeah, I can see it. There's something, I got too many photos here. I think it's this one. Let's see. Yeah, one of those does not belong because it starts with a medium exposure. So let's try with these. Let's try it again. So it will tell you, it, it will not be fooled by you throwing pictures together that should not be a panorama or HDR. Uh, in this case, so now I grab the right one. So it's gonna go ahead and do it. And uh, since it's already on perspective and it's already on auto crop, the preview should look much better this time because it's already on all the things I like. So those defaults are sticky, which is kind of nice. And uh, can you combine landscape and portrait panorama? Yes, you can. So you can shoot across and up and down and it should work. And actually I like this one better because it's more of the ground, more of the people. Um, I got, I just did a better job of capturing the frames on this one. So I think this was the actual one I used because I can tell by the clouds and um, there's that streak in the middle that I remember, I remember uh, content aware um, filling that out. And of course I removed the, the soccer ball, don't tell anybody. All right, so with that said, that if I go ahead and click merge, it would do it. I am missing a photo, so there should be nine, but it still worked. And there we go. So I'm gonna cancel out of that because I'm done, but I'm gonna show you one more thing. For the Lightroom, this is Lightroom Classic CC. So for the Lightroom CC users in the room that stayed with me and hung out to the end, you're gonna get a bonus. So um, Lightroom Classic has had the ability, if you go under, uh, I think it's under photo, you've had the ability to identify people but it was a really manual process. It would ask you, hey, is this Susan you know, Jones? And you'd have to say, yes, it is. And then it would say, hey, is this Susan Jones? And, you, and no, that's a tennis ball. <laughs> you, know, you would just go through all these, these it, it just wasn't as good as it should have been for identifying people. And therefore, if it's gonna take a lot of manual labor to make to tag people and, and get them the right names, people just won't do it. So when I heard the feature was coming to Lightroom CC that does the same, uh, I thought does the same thing. I was like, who cares? You know, it didn't work that well in Lightroom Classic for me anyway. Uh, it was, or it did work. It just took a lot of work to make it work. I was like, well, then why do I care about it in Lightroom CC? And then I tried it. So let's jump over to Lightroom CC. In Lightroom CC, there's a brand new, as of this week, people area. But this one's different. You don't actually have to do anything, but just click on it. Because this one's using Adobe Sensei, the artificial intelligence by Adobe, to put together all the people by their faces and identify them. And I, I was kind of like, sure it does. Until I actually went through all the ones that it did. And I was like, oh my God. I, I think out of all the albums that it put together, there may have been one or two and thousands of photos that weren't correct. So like a 99.9% .9 accuracy rate, which is unheard of for people tagging. 
So let's go ahead and click on it. Here are all the ones that it put together for me. It put these together automatically and it's still doing it, still going through and putting them together. And it's just figuring out who these people are. So there's 137 photos of my friend Diego. You notice some have names. I've gone ahead and put start putting the names on them. But if I click on this one, this is, and it's not even asked me in this case, is this the same person? I think it is. I, I can't even tell myself. But these are all the ones it put together with Diego in them. And it nailed it. It like got all of them. Like the, there isn't one that's wrong. These all have a picture of Diego in them. Even the ones where I thought up front, oh, it's got some woman on a treadmill. That's not, oh, there he is. He's down there in the corner. So it, it worked. Even in the most obscure circumstances where he's like down in the corner and not even looking dead into the camera. I was just blown away by how well this worked in Lightroom CC. So it's asking me to add a name. I'm going to say that this is Diego. And uh, now when I go back to the main view, his name will be there. And now it's asking me, is this Diego? And I can say, if it is, yes, merge. If no, I can't. And, and I, I see why it's having a hard time. I can't tell, but I think that is him. I'm going to go ahead and say merge. And same thing, he's kind of looking down. So this is where Adobe Sensei is not sure. Yes, that's him. And that's it. Done. So there were a few that it just couldn't tell, and you could tell for obvious reasons. I couldn't tell until I really looked close, but that was him, and now it added him in. So check, if you're using Lightroom CC, go click on Faces, and it'll automatically go through all of your photos, how many ever you have, and group all the people together. So now, whenever you're looking for a picture of a particular person, you just go to their face, click on it, there's Diego now, Go to their face, click on it, and you've got all the photos of that person in one spot. This is freaking mind-blowing. Again, how well it worked. And uh, I was going through like dozens of these trying to find one that didn't work. There's my buddy Jason from Adobe. And all of these have pictures of Jason in them, even back in South Africa when we were there together. So every single one, even like on this Jeep where he's like way in the background, barely visible, it got him. And he's even asking for some of these old ones. Is that Jason? Yep, that's an old shot of Jason and done. So uh, here, I can go ahead and put in Jason Levine. All right, so check it out, people in Lightroom CC. If you're using Lightroom Classic CC, you've got access to Lightroom CC. All right, so with that said, is there a limit? There's no limit. It just, how many ever photos you have of that person, it will put them together. So for example, I, uh, I think I have lots of photos of me. That's over a thousand right there. Um, and, and sometimes now it will do this. It will, like, I think on mine, it had one group of like, I don't know, let's say 500 and another group of 600, whatever it was. And all you have to do is select both of them. You can merge them together. So sometimes it will, maybe it was the younger me <laughs> and then the older me and it put them together as two different groups. They were all right. It just separated them out. So I just merged the two groups together, which just simply select the groups that you want to merge and merge them, uh, with a right click and you're done. So once again, that's my time. Be sure to check out not only the new HDR panel feature, but also the people feature in Lightroom CC. So with that said, cheers everybody. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining me here live on Lightroom Thursday. We will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody. Uh -huh.